Outreach Mentor. We have with us today Isha Nabar. Isha is studying in New York City and she's doing her bachelor's in fine arts and she's majoring in fashion designing. We'd love to hear from her and all that she has in store. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Isha and I'm a design student. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how I developed my interest for fashion and then how I pursued this as a career. Um, so I'm currently pursuing a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, which is a four-year course. Um, I'm majoring in fashion design and minoring in creative entrepreneurship. I'm currently studying in New York abroad. Um, as an individual, I've always been deeply, deeply interested in design and innovation and textiles. And just being from India, I've always been surrounded by so much art and I've, I've been lucky enough to have this really rich cultural background. But personally, what really fascinated me and drew me to design and to fashion was being you know, a viewer and spectator of the grandeur of costuming in the film industry and more specifically for me um, in Bollywood, which is the Indian film industry. I mean, I just, I always loved the costumes and um, while the cinematic age was, it was really highly desired by such an extensive audience and it was just widely popular in India, for me it was in fact um, the costuming and the dress and fashion in films that really it demanded my attention and my appreciation and you know, me and my sister when we were little we would always wear these costumes and imitate these characters and run around. But what I really saw with me and my sister and in these Bollywood films was that each time we wore this costume, a character came alive. And I found that so fascinating. I mean, it was, it was just this point of creative brilliance that I saw. And I saw this, this power and this potency of, of fashion to really elevate a character and to transport an audience and that was that was everything for me once I started noticing that then I couldn't stop noticing it and I decided that I really wanted to be a part of this transformative experience and really be involved in fashion in that way so that's how I decided that it was a career that I really wanted to have and of course like I said being from India I always I was immersed in an appreciation for arsenal, handicrafts and craftsmanship but I thought in order to really be relevant I needed to have more of a global outlook and just be exposed to different perspectives and you know have different viewpoints and interact with diverse individuals and cultures and that's why I thought going abroad could be a really viable option for me and that's how I really decided to pursue my further studies abroad. So now I'm going to be talking a little bit about the admission process to get into these design universities. Um, so in India, mostly for most of the top design universities, you have to give um, entrance exams which have either one or two levels depending on the college that you're applying to. And these test various different skills and this is normally followed up with an interview. Again, this differs from one university to the next. Um, but when you apply abroad, the process is a little bit different. Um, you have a few common components across most of the top universities which I'll talk about. Um, the first component is an artist statement. So an artist statement is a little bit of a descriptive essay where um, you describe who you are as an artist, what your style really is and how you express yourself creatively. Um, the second component is the statement of purpose, which is where you describe, again it's an essay, and um, you describe 
you know, why you want to go to that particular university, what you bring to the table, and then what in turn they can offer you uniquely um, as a design university. And then the third component, um, which is one of the most important ones, is your portfolio, which is a collection of about six to ten pieces of artwork. And this can be across um, different mediums and it often has a running theme through it or it sometimes doesn't and you digitally compose these with often a little bit of description and send it to the university. So these are the three most common components and then some colleges specifically often have a design challenge where they give you a prompt and then you have to respond to them um, in the most creative and unique manner that you think you can. Um, again, these all differ from one to the next, but these are some of the foundational um, parts of almost all applications. So now I'm going to be delving into the four-year course structure. As I mentioned, the Bachelor of Fine Arts Fashion Design degree program is a four-year course. I'm going to be talking a little about what these four years entail and um, then you know what it consists of and if that interests you. Um, so the primary aim of this course of um, fashion design is really for um, an individual to develop a sense of um, design thinking and critically and strategically have the ability to problem solve. It's also important um, as a designer to be able to design both creatively and responsibly, especially in the world that we're living in today, where um, sustainability is so important. And really being able to bring a positive impact through your fashion is so essential. So those are some of um, the critical points that the course focuses on. Um, in addition to that, while like the final looks and collections are really important, they also really focus in on the silhouette and the form, and importantly, the process. Um, now going into the four years, um, the first year is normally your core foundation year, which is common for almost all um, design majors in the university. Um, this foundation year, you develop core skills, um, whether they are um, skills for hand drawing, um, where you learn how to sketch and ideate and experiment through a number of different mediums, um, or they are also very often digital skills, um, like learning the Adobe Suite, where uh, you learn image making and Photoshop and Illustrator, or um, how to make layouts in InDesign or even video editing in Adobe Premiere. Um, in addition to this, depending on which studios are available in which universities, um, you can get the chance to work also with different materials. For example, I had the opportunity to work with wood and metal and ceramics. Um, so really just exploring and understanding um, all these different mediums that exist so that you can carry that forward with you for the next three years. Um, at the end of the first year is typically when you declare your major. So I declared my major as fashion design at the end of my first year. And then the next three years that follow have a similar pattern in their curriculum. Um, so for fashion design, you always have your core classes, which are your requirements. Um, these core classes teach you really foundational skills that are important and directly relate to your major. So for fashion design, for instance, you have um, fashion sketching where you learn how to draw the fashion body and paint um, your clothes and fashion sketches. And you even learn how to digitally render them. So um, that could be one. Another one is um, classes for draping and pattern making. Um, and really other classes that really hone in into um, you know, learning the technical skills for sewing. Um, in addition to this, you often have classes for um, visually communicating and presenting your collection in 
the most effective manner possible to an audience, as well as marketing and branding your connection. Um, so these are your core classes. And With these core classes, you also get a chance to take electives. Um, electives are classes that complement your core classes. Um, and the number of electives that you take can differ from one university to the next. There are normally two types of electives. Um, the first one is called program electives, which are more practical classes um, that teach you skills that truly really supplement um, the core foundational skills you're learning through your other fashion design courses. Some of the program electives um, that I took were machine knitting, hand knitting, ceramics, screen printing, jewelry design. Um, so these, these really um, were classes that I was deeply interested in and that worked well um, to my other skills that I learned in um, my fashion design course. In addition to your program electives, you also have liberal art electives. Um, these electives are very theory based um, where you have the opportunity to really theoretically learn about um, fashion and relate them to different concepts. Um, so for instance, you can learn uh, the history of fashion in South Asia, or the history of fashion in Africa or Europe, or learning about fashion during a specific time era, or relating feminism and fashion, or gender theories in fashion. Um, so these are your liberal art electives. Um, so the, these three really form the primary curriculum of your fashion design course, your core foundation classes, your liberal art electives, and your program electives. Um, at the end of your third year is normally when you declare a pathway, um, which is a area of specialization. And this area of specialization is what you uh, base your thesis in your fourth year um, on. And in your fourth year, you have to present a thesis, um, as I just mentioned, which is a collection of uh, fashion looks that really best describes who you are as an artist, how you creatively express yourself, and who you see yourself as a designer in the future as. Um, so once you have declared your specialization, you really work closely with your advisor who has an expertise in this area and develop your thesis collection. Um, some examples of pathways are women's wear, men's wear, children's wear, lingerie, athleisure, or sometimes you can even focus in, in more on, on a concept, for instance, materiality, where the entire um, fashion collection focuses on a specific kind of texture or fabric that you've developed, um, or looking at sustainability, um, or a fashion collection um, that focuses more on a particular society, um, whether it's a marginalized society like obese people or disabled people, or um, where your fashion collection actually has positive impact um, in designing for, say, underprivileged kids. So um, those are some of the pathways and um, specializations that you can choose. Um, and then once you present your thesis collection, you definitely have to defend this to a jury and um, you also have the opportunity to have a fashion show which is really exciting um, because there's a lot of press and media and you get to show off your collection to um, family members and classmates. Um, so that's really how you end your four years. So um, there's a lot happening but each year you really progress more and more towards becoming a more uh, cohesive and prominent designer. You normally start off um, the process of designing your collection by creating a mood board. A mood board essentially is a collection and collage of all images. So it's how you visually represent um, your idea. So often you don't even know what your idea is but you have mood or feel. So you just start collecting a lot of images and then dump them together um, to create this kind of board that really then formulates in a more cohesive manner what your idea is. 
Um, this can be done digitally like I've done here or it can be done um, physically where you take a lot of magazine cutouts and uh, different printouts and collage them together. Along with a mood board, you always start off with a color board, which is where you have a color palette that is clearly de defined and really sets the mood for your collection. Um, after doing these two initial um, visual representations of your idea, you often go to um, your, your research. So there are different forms of research. There's primary research where you can actually go on field and interview people or the secondary research where um, you can you know go to different secondary resources like newspapers um, magazines or even um, looking online on the internet and searching for uh, different articles on your particular topic so then you typically form these research pages because you really want to have a strong foundation and grasp on the subject that you're going to comment on as a designer. So um, this is some of the process that you can possibly have. Um, once you have your process ready, you then move on um, to other different segments of designing. Um, this could include draping where you really experiment with the way a fabric falls on a body. Um, I, I personally love working in a three-dimensional way, so for me that works, but this differs from one designer to the next. Um, and then you, then you go to preliminary sketches, where you just start sketching um, and you don't really care as much about the aesthetics, but it's just the first initial output of your ideas on a fashion body. So once you have um, some of your preliminary sketches done, is when you really talk to your advisor and your professor and they help formulate a more um, coherent idea and theme for your collection. Um, that is when you then go to formulate your final fashion renderings and this is where you really um, think about the colors, the silhouette, um, the fabric and you know you can draw them digitally and color them in. I often use this pad to do that. Um, once you have your final fashion renderings done um, is when you start constructing your um, garment. For this, you select uh, different fabrics, you do different fabric manipulations. Um, so you create your final fabric board and then different manipulations because you don't always use your fabrics as they are bought in the market. Sometimes um, you can get really hands-on with the fabric and uh, manipulate it to look different ways um, and different techniques. That's what really makes it unique and gives it a personal touch. So um, after that, then you really get into the sewing and the pattern making and have your final um, look ready. Um, once your garments are constructed, it's really important to communicate it to your audience in the most effective way manner. And one of these ways is through a photo shoot because it really um, contextualizes your creative vision and it also shows how the garment falls on a body. Um, your photo shoot is often presented in a lookbook um, where you, you know, portray different angles and um, different parts of the garment. You often combine them with different pieces. So this is an example of a lookbook I had made earlier on. Um, once you have a lookbook ready, then it's just all about the presentation and the marketing and branding of your collection. Um, so that's really the process of how you, um, you know, start and make a garment from conceptualization um, right to the end point. So now I'm going to be discussing a little bit about fashion shows. So fashion shows are really the most exciting part of the designing process. Um, these come at the very end of designing your collection and they are put on when you're ready to show your collection to the world. So being able to showcase your work and your collection in a fashion show in college really gives you a taste of the real world and all the excitement that goes into putting on a fashion show. 
Um, and I was lucky enough to study abroad in Paris for one semester. So I got to see my seniors put on their thesis collection and see how a fashion show works from that cultural lens. And hopefully when I put on my fashion show in New York where I'm currently studying, I'll be able to experience it through um, that atmosphere and that culture as well. So there are a number of job opportunities for you as a designer and you start exploring these early on during your four-year course study. Um, this is often done through internship experiences where you get a chance to work with um, a fashion company or brand for a limited amount of time, for instance three months or six months, but it's during this time that you get really um, hands-on industry experience. Um, and you can work in different departments during your internship so you really get varied experiences and you have the chance to understand which department and which area of fashion it is that you have a specific interest in. Um, apart from these internships, once you graduate, um, the job opportunities for a fashion designer are endless. Um, of course, you can work at a fashion house or a fashion company um, and you can decide what type of fashion company um, you would like to work at. For instance, um, there are luxury fashion houses, there are couture fashion houses, um, there are fashion brands that specialize in evening wear, athleisure or children's wear, knitwear, sustainability. So depending on your interest and your specialization, especially um, what pathway and thesis um, you base your final year on, you often decide what type of company you want to work for. Now within these fashion companies, um, there are a varied number of roles. Um, you can work in the fabric research and development department where you're really responsible for um, sourcing different fabrics and setting the tone for um, that particular season through your fabrics. Um, there is the fabric trims and accessories department um, which often looks at different trims and embroideries um, that can work with uh, the fabric that has been chosen by the R&D department. Um, so this was also a process um, that you do as a designer during your four-year course study, as I've mentioned earlier. Um, apart from the fabrics, of course, the most prominent department that a lot of people want to work at is the design department, where um, and the designer actually ideates and experiments and sketches ideas for the collection. Um, based on the theme for that season that's given to them by the head designer. Um, and then um, designers are often assisted by technical designers who have um, the most strong founded technical expertise. Um, they really work with sampling and size grading and look at all um, the technical aspects of designing. Uh, they also work closely with the atelier um, where a lot of um, these couture houses do not actually outsource manufacturing, but they have um, in-house people who sew their garments. So technical designer often works with the atelier as well. Um, and then in addition to technical designers, you have more focused designers for accessories, jewelry, handbags, um, as well as shoes. Um, so you can also specialize in one of these areas. And then, of course, you have more uh, the business side of uh, designing, um, where you can work as a trend forecaster, where you really try to uh, study the, the trends of the market and forecast them for the designers. Or you can work as a merchandiser and um, really look at how you want to display your garments, visually present them um, in a retail space or as a buy, buyer and a planner. Um, buying and planning is a very upcoming field where um, the buyer and planner really looks at what stocks um, and what sales ratio you're having 
and they are mainly um, the mediator between the consumer and the designers. They understand what the market really demands and wants and what will do well in the market, what will make money for the company and they communicate this to the designer. If red is suddenly doing really well or a particular cut is doing well in the market, then they make sure the designer has that particular color in their collection. Um, and then of course you can work in wholesale or e-commerce. Apart from this, there is of course um, the marketing and social media side of designing where you work in promotion and VIP events um, as well as just uh, marketing your brand holistically. Um, this can also be a specialization where you work specifically in um, digital agencies, in fashion digital agencies. Uh, you could also work in online agencies because e-commerce is so happening right now. So um, where you work for an Amazon or a Mintra.com where they really need a fashion eye and an expertise in that area. Um, so this is more uh, the business side of it. If, if you're really good at writing, you could also work in the editorial side, um, where you could work at a magazine possibly and write and edit um, pieces if you have a command over um, fashion and over shows um, and you want to really comment on the ongoing trends. Uh, and then something that's very relevant um, to right now is working as a fashion stylist, working as a fashion influencer or a blogger. Um, all these are very related to um, the upcoming of social media and um, they're very, very prominent emerging fields. And then of course you can be an entrepreneur and start your own brand and um, be the face of your own label. Um, so that of course is a very viable and satisfying option. Um, or you can work as a stylist, as a fashion stylist for different celebrities. So these are all different job possibilities. So there's really a lot to do in fashion and um, I hope I've covered a few of them. Thank you, Isha, for taking us to this wonderful journey of fashion designing that you're doing in America. We do hope many students are inspired and we wish you all the very best for your future. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and get connected.